Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today we're going to be talking about a very important topic to the world of Diablo 2 and, uh, and that is runeword bases. So not runewords themselves but runeword bases. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can obtain a runeword base but uh, if you are a newer player you might be having trouble finding a four socket pole arm or a four socket shield for a spirit or um, you know any number of uh, of of items with the correct number of sockets so that you can make what you're looking for. Now there are specific ways that you can force sockets onto an item and uh, and there is even a way of course where you can get the right number of sockets and we're gonna go over all that today and I hope you will join me. Um, so first off what I'd like to talk about is the way to force items to have the number of sockets that you would like. And um, we're going to go over an, a bunch of different ways that you can do that. But the first, of course, the most important, of course, is finding the item with the right number of sockets. Um, if you can find the item with the right number of sockets, uh, then you don't have to force the sockets on the item. Um, however, it's a little difficult to do if you don't know where those items drop. Now, there is an oversimplification of uh, this process, and I would like to, to state this oversimplification before I go into the more uh, boring details of it. Um, suffice it to say, in normal difficulty, you will only ever get three sockets in an item. So if you are looking for that beautiful, beautiful uh, four-socket base for a spirit, or that beautiful, beautiful um, four-socket base for a, a really nice polearm weapon, um, you're not going to find those four socket bases in normal difficulty as as a general rule, but not as a um, complete like blackout. There are ways to get those four socket items in normal difficulty. It's just not going to drop on the ground for you. Um, now, I uh, the oversimplification is basically this: three socket items and and down will drop from normal difficulty. Four socket items will drop from Nightmare, and six socket items will drop from Hell. Um, the cow level seems to be kind of um, an exception to this rule because the cow level is the highest level zone in each difficulty setting. Um, I wouldn't say highest level, but it's it's one of the highest levels. And white items tend to drop there a lot. And we will be going into the cow level later on this episode, uh, just simply because you know there's a lot of bases that will drop there, and it's going to be a good uh, practice. But for uh, just for pity's sake, for right now, let's take a look at an item. So this is a superior great hallmark that was found with a 12% ED, and it would make a nice rune word. However, it doesn't have any sockets on it, and we'd like to add sockets to that item. Um, the thing is, is if say if we wanted a treachery, we would want three, or if we wanted a fortitude, we would want four sockets, or maybe we wanted a stealth, we would want two sockets, and so forth and so on. So how do you get the right number of sockets in the item? Well, if you take this item and you bring it over to Larzik, Larzik will always socket it with the maximum number of sockets possible for the item. And uh, this means that the item will get four sockets because that is how many sockets this particular item is capable of. And you might be asking, well, how do you know that information? Well, I do have a website that I go to, um, and it is called Diablo2.io. There are many other websites as well, but I find that this one is one of the easiest to navigate just in general. And um, you can look up pretty much anything here and find out what the maximum number of sockets is, are on the items. Um, you know, uh, just in general, um, like what weapon types they are. Like, say, for instance, I wanted an insight polearm. I could go to uh, polearms. And it would show me all the polearm classes. And uh, and I can look here at this uh, modifier right here down at the bottom. It says max sockets, uh, which is right here. See, it says max sockets 4, max sockets 6, uh, max sockets 5. Now, why is this important? Now, the reason why this is important is because if I specifically wanted to take this uh, Colossus Volge, for instance, and bring it to Larzik, and roll it for sockets, essentially with Larzik. Larzik is always going to give it the maximum number of sockets that the item is possible. Now, if you see here, it says maximum number of sockets four, which means if I take a Colossus Volge to Larzik, it will always end up with four sockets. Whereas if I take a uh, Giant Thrasher to Larzik, it will always end up with six sockets. 
So this Giant Thresher would not be a good item to bring to Larzik because Larzik is going to add six sockets to it and it's going to be too many sockets for an inside polearm. And this is important when it comes to rune words is the number of sockets has to be the exact number of runes in the rune word. You cannot use a four socket uh, item for a three socket rune word. You cannot use a three socket item for a four socket rune word. It has to be a four socket item for a four socket rune word. So the Larzik quest is one way that you can add sockets to an item. But say for instance you found a really awesome um, ethereal giant thresher and you would like to try and get four sockets to turn it into an insight pole arm or maybe you want to try and get uh, three sockets to turn it into a, uh, a crescent moon or whatever it, you may want to to turn this into so how do you roll sockets on an item well the answer to that question is is you can roll sockets using uh, Haradra cube recipes there are uh, four different Haradra cube recipes for four different items. And those recipes are, uh, are, are actually right here. So um, the first one is going to be the Socket Helm recipe, uh, which is Ral, Thal, and a Perfect Sapphire. The second one is the uh, Socket Shield recipe. And the Socket Shield recipe is a Tal rune an am rune and a perfect ruby um, the next one is the socket weapon and socket weapon is a ral rune an am rune and a perfect amethyst and the third one which is the armor um, is a tal rune a thal rune and a perfect topaz as you can see there are four different gems here that you would use and believe it or not i actually uh left this out of my uh what to do with your perfect gems video which is very sad uh because this is uh this is four more uses for your perfect gems and um i wish i could just edit it back in there but uh, unfortunately that's not possible now if we take this superior hauberk and we take this and put it in the herodric cube we can pull the appropriate runes as we saw the tal the thal and the perfect topaz are the correct runes for this recipe so putting the tal rune the thal rune and the perfect topaz in here with the armor and hitting transmute should give me anywhere between one to three sockets but it doesn't work now you might be asking yourself why is it not working is he an idiot uh, well i promise you i'm not an idiot i did this for demonstration purposes um, although i might be an idiot <laughs> the reason why you cannot roll this item in the cube is because it's a superior item uh, back in the old days, uh, they had issues with items when they were being transmuted, losing their original properties. And um, so I think in their infinite wisdom, they decided to not allow superior items to be rolled. Now, what that means is, is that the only items that can be rolled are non-superior items. Um, and there is a chance that this could have ended up bad. So when you roll an item, like if I put this in the cube... And let's say it's not a superior item, and I roll this with the correct recipe. Um, it will end up between one and the maximum number of sockets. So one, two, three, or four sockets can be on this item. Now, this particular item um, can't be rolled, but you know, if it was a non-superior, it could be. And I could end up with one, which would basically be trash. One socket is nothing. <coughs> two sockets is like a stealth armor or a smoke. Um, three sockets is like a treachery. Uh, or an enigma. Uh, four sockets is like a fortitude. So there are, there are hundreds of different rune words that you can get, but it depends on which one specifically that you are looking for. And um, I would definitely go with um, the Larzik quest if you are trying to get four sockets specifically, um, and you just really, really can't afford to lose that base. Like maybe you found just like the most perfect base that you've ever seen in your life, like 15% ED. Um, you know, and, and you need four sockets, and that's absolutely great, because that's what Larzik will give you. Larzik is not going to give you three, he's not going to give you two, and he's not going to give you one, because that's what this armor is max on. Now, there is a specific set of circumstances in which Larzik will not give you the maximum number of sockets on an item. And uh, remember earlier when I said that normal difficulty is three sockets, a nightmare difficulty is four, and hell difficulty is six. 
Well, that was an oversimplification of things, and I'm going to go into it in a little bit more detail now. Um, and basically what it is, is the monster that drops the item has an eye level, a, a level. And it determines the eye level of the item, which is essentially the item level of the item. If the item level of the item does not support four sockets, it'll be limited to three or two. In fact, some items actually can be limited to one socket. Like, for instance, if you find something in Act 1, um, a lot of the times the monsters are so low level that the items that you find will only ever have one socket. Um, I've actually ran into this before myself uh, with a wand. I found probably what was one of the most perfect uh, white bases. White is a rune word, uh, Dole Io. Dole and, uh, and, and Io. And um, it's absolutely excellent for poison and bone necromancers. And this particular wand was an absolutely excellent white wand. However, when I went and socketed it at Larzik, it only ended up with one socket. And the reason why it only ended up with one socket was because it was a really, really low-level wand. And, uh, and the eye level of the wand was absolutely garbage. Now, if you go, if we go back to uh, Diablo2.io, um, we can take a look at uh, specific items and we can try and figure out the, uh, the rune word bases that we would like. So, so let's go through uh, some various rune words here and let's just, uh, let's just see what we can come up with, right? So, Faith Bow. Let's say we wanted to make a Faith Bow. Um, so a faith bow is going to be a four socket bow. So we're going to pull up bows and, uh, we're going to look and see. So we've got five sockets, five sockets, five sockets, five sockets, five sockets, six, five, 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 six, six. Uh, so the blade bow is four. Uh, the diamond bow is five. The great bow is four. So, so basically what we're looking at here is we're looking at, um, specific bows that have a maximum number of sockets and we know what the maximum number of sockets of those are now let's uh let's limit this to the higher level items so we should be able to sort this yes by elite so now we're looking at only elite bases and um, and we can see things like the amount of damage that they do uh, we can see uh, the base attack speed. So we have a base attack speed of 10. These are negative 10, which means they're much faster. Um, and we can sort of try and choose uh, what we would like as a base for a faith bow. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what's the best base? And the answer to that question is it depends on what you're doing. Um, for instance, if you are a, an actual Amazon, uh, maybe you'll make a, a, a base in a Grand Matron bow or a Matriarchal bow. Um, these are two specific bows for specifically for Amazons, and they come with plus to skills on them. However, if you're making a bow for a mercenary, you might go with uh, something like a Hydra bow or a, uh, or a Diamond bow or something along those lines. And um, for instance, if I were going to make a bow for a... Uh, specifically for a mercenary i might be looking more of speed than i am for damage and uh, if i'm looking at these bows correctly um, the shadow bow has a base speed of zero with a decent damage so it looks like i might go with a shadow bow but again we're stuck with this maximum sockets of five which means i can't larzic four sockets into the bow so if I wanted to Larzic four sockets in the bow, I'd have to go with something like the Great Bow, which has maximum sockets of four, or the Blade Bow, which has maximum sockets of four. Um, as you can see, the Spider Bow only has a maximum sockets of three and is not going to get the correct number of sockets no matter what. So um, let's take a look at another item real quick. So uh, let's say you wanted to make an Insight Polearm, uh, which is a very popular polearm. Um, so you're trying to get yourself a, uh, a pole arm that has four sockets. And uh, if we take a look at all the pole arms here, um, you'll see that some of them have maximum sockets of four, like the CV. And that's one of the reasons why the CV is so sought after, because the Colossus Fulge is four max sockets, which means that if you find an ethereal Colossus Fulge uh, with no sockets, you can take it to Larzik and he will automatically put four sockets in it for you. Um, however, there are better options than the CV. Um, you'll see that the CV has a speed of 10, which makes it one of the slower weapons. 
whereas the Giant Thresher has a speed of negative 10, which makes it a better choice. Now, the damage on the CV is a little bit better, but the stats requirement on the CV of 210 is really high. And this is also a really important um, thing to look at when you're looking at Rune Word bases is uh, what about the strength of the decks? And um, so, you know, if we're looking at 210 strength, 200 strength, 10 strength is going to be pretty hard for a mercenary to wield. Now, it is important to note that when an item is ethereal, it does reduce the requirements by 10. So it will be, instead of 210 and 55, it will be 245. Um, not 10%, just a flat 10 will be taken off of whatever the uh, requirements are for the item. Which is, which is very nice because the mercenaries, you know, if they can't wield the item, it's absolutely useless to them. Now, if you're a low-level character and you were looking for an item specifically for um, a lobby, um, you can go here and you can look for normal quality items. And you'll see that normal quality items normal quality items uh, such as the halberd can have up to six sockets um, the loach bar axe can have only three so that's not possible the bill which is the um, the normal version of the the normal version of the uh, or the nightmare version sorry the nightmare version of the colossus vulge there's the normal version the vulge uh, can have four sockets so the vulge can have four as well um, so if you were to look for a low-level insight, a Volge would work for a low-level insight, and you could put four sockets in that early on, and you could get yourself the rune word. Now, it's important to note, though, that if you find a Volge in normal difficulty, there's a good chance it could only end up with three. And this has to do with the eye level of the monster that you killed. So if the monster that you killed and this dropped from the Volge, if it's, you know, say you found an ethereal Volge and you want to make a really low level insight. And you took it to Larzik and Larzik only gives it three sockets. The reason why he's only giving it three sockets is because it has too low of an eye level to be classified for. Um, and this, this is an issue that you will come, you know, see throughout the game. Which is why I generally recommend to find your bases that you want four sockets in in Nightmare Difficulty. To find your bases that you want six sockets in in Hell Difficulty. Because in general, you are going to see that most items found in normal difficulty will only end up with three. Most items found in nightmare difficulty will only end up with four. And most items found in hell difficulty will only end up with six. And there are exceptions. If you kill the right monsters and the item drops from the right monster who is a high enough level, the eye level of the item will be the correct level. However, what I'm trying to tell you is that, you know, Larzic quests don't grow on trees. I mean, you can get them by rushing up characters, but they, but you only get three per character. And um, and if you're going to waste a large quest on an item that doesn't even that won't even be useful to you, for instance, socketing a Volge, an early level Volge, and uh, and not getting four sockets, that's going to be pretty sad. So if you if you tend to look for your four socket bases in Nightmare difficulty as opposed to normal. Um, you can uh, you can ensure that they will end up with four sockets. Um, cow level is one of the few exceptions. Like for instance, if you are running along in cow level and you happen to find a uh, a crystal sword, for instance, um, a crystal sword uh, in if you find in normal difficulty cow level a crystal sword, you can socket that to four sockets with the Larza quest. Um, it's because of the eye level of the cows themselves or that the, the monster level of the cows is high enough to drop good eye level items. And um, speaking of cows, let's uh, let's take a look at cows, shall we? I'm going to drop the leg on the ground here, and we're going to hop into the cow level. All right, here we are, and we're at the cow level. Got my little army running, and we're going to kill some cows, and we're going to see what items drop. And as we um, go along, I'm going to pick up the items that um, that I feel will be good for rune word bases. And that's really all there is to it. Um, if the item is good for rune word base, I will keep it. If it's not good for rune word base, I will uh, I will tell you it's not good for rune word base. And um, and I think this is the best way for us to go about um, you know picking out rune word bases because there's really nothing like seeing what you need. So right now we have an item on the ground which is uh, socketed. It's a superior great helm with uh, three sockets and it is uh, enhanced defense. 
six percent. Uh, what rune words would this be good for? There's not a lot of really good uh, three socket helmet rune words at a low level like this. Um, this is definitely a low level requirement helmet. Um, you could put. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I think it's radiance in this. Um, it's not exactly one of the best rune word recipes out there. Uh, let me pull this up real quick just to be 100% sure. So, and the important thing here to note, though, is that um, is that this is a low-level helmet, all right? And um, and what this means is that you can't really you're not really going to use it for a high-level rune word. Um, you're going to use it for low-level rune words. Uh, so, if we go to the Diablo2.io website, we can uh, take a look at uh, rune words, which is a uh, is a very useful, very very useful thing that you can do on this website. And, um, and so we've got three sockets here, um, and then we're going to uh, do the item group helmets, uh, which is right here. And so you see we've got three options. So we've got Dream, which is uh, IO Job Pole, which is way out of our, our, uh, our budget. Uh, it's definitely a too high of a rune word to be putting in a uh, normal difficulty superior grade helm. Uh, we have Delirium, which Lem Ist IO, again, too high level for a... Uh, normal difficulty helmet. We have Radiance here, which is Nef Soul Ith, which is only level 27. It has enhanced defense, um, uh, energy, vitality, damage taken goes to mana, um, 33 to mana, damage reduced by 7. So that's the only rune word that this would be good for. Now what else could this helmet be good for? It could be good for three perfect topazes. If you wanted to do a quick uh, three perfect topaz magic find helmet, um, that would definitely be okay for that. Uh, we also have a, uh, a Martel de Fur here. Uh, the Martel de Fur is six sockets with a level requirement of level 25. Um, and then we have also found a giant paunch, which is one socket, so no rune words can go in this. So that goes right back into the dirt. And uh, we also have a Bastard Sword here, which is two sockets. And um, the, this Bastard Sword could be used for a, uh, a Steel, uh, which is, I believe, Tier L. Just want to make sure, yes. Tier L. Tier L could be a, uh, a decent reward order to put in that. It's a low-level sword. So if you wanted to uh, to use a really nice low level sword for a like a low level barbarian, uh, that might be a good base for that. Um, six socket Martel de Fur at level 25 would be good for a Maul barbarian. Um, if you wanted to make a specific rune word in it for a Maul barbarian, however, when it comes to six sockets, there might not specifically be a rune word for that particular item. Um, especially at the level that you're trying to do. So level 25 is uh, is a decent level for a low-level hammer. However, if we take a look over at uh, Diablo2.io, we can get an idea of how realistic a six-socket uh, level 25 hammer is. So, uh, so let's go back over to Diablo2.io. We're going to go to uh, item group, hammers. Actually, is it a hammer or is it a mace? We have to make sure of that. So this is a uh, it says it is a mace class. So we're going to go do maces, um, and then we're going to go to uh, six sockets. And as you can see, we don't have any recipes for a mace a six socket. Breath of the Dying is six socket weapons. So there are some recipes that are just weapons, which basically means all weapons. And, um, and those rune words essentially go in any weapon, no matter what it is. Um, it's just melee weapons. There are things like Malice, which is three sockets. Um, Eternity, which is... Um, what is that? Six sockets? Uh, five sockets. Uh, so forth and so on. So the only six socket recipe, as far as I can tell, is Breath of the Dying. All the rest here are either five sockets or three sockets or two sockets, etc. Uh, definitely not um, ones that can be helpful to us. We also have, let's see, Missile Missile, Call to Arms, uh, Phoenix. We've got tons of different recipes here, but uh, but none of them are going to be six socket recipes for this particular item. Um, well, we've got Silence. Silence is level 55, so again, that's kind of too high. Um, 
So no, that's uh, it's not going to be useful to uh, to any any recipe really, um, and that's and that's kind of what we're looking at here. Is we're looking at is this item useful, um, and are we going to pick it up? Um, are we going to keep it? Um, and uh, and the answer to that question of that one is no. We're not going to keep that item. Um, we don't have any specific purpose for that item. Um, somebody else could specifically have a purpose for that item, but uh, but not us. And uh, we're just going to keep rolling along here. In fact, I'm going to take off some of my magic find. If you guys are unaware of this, uh, magic find actually does restrict the drops for white items. So one of the things that magic find does is it causes less white items to hit the ground. Um, when an item drops, the item is automatically white. And your magic find increases the quality of the item. Um, this is the reason why when you put on more magic find, you tend to find more and more blues, rares, sets, and uniques, and less whites and socketed items, because those whites and socketed items are being turned into the, uh, the, the you know, the good items. Um, this is a Seraph Rod. I picked it up because I wanted to see if it would be good for a, uh, a base, but it has no plus to skills. So one of the main uh, qualifiers for class items, especially if you want to turn them into a, um, a rune word, is you want them to have plus to skills on them. If they don't have plus to skills on them, they're absolutely useless. Um, most of the time, they're absolutely useless. Now, not not like 100% of the time, but like 99% of the time. There are some very um, clear examples otherwise, and those are usually when a class item is being used for a non-class character. So if you guys notice, uh, the Paladin Scepters can be used by anybody. I, use this yet. Um, I don't have the, the dexterity requirement, but you can use them on any character, not just Paladins. So, um, so there are specific recipes for Paladin Scepters, which other classes will use. And, uh, and that's really the only important thing there when it comes to, to non-skilled items. So here we have a battle scythe, we, and it has three sockets. And uh, this is probably not one that we're going to keep because we're not going to put any rune words in that so that, uh, that are three sockets for us. Um, it's level 25, which is a rather high level requirement for a, uh, a low level rune word, or, and it's a rather low requirement for a high level rune word. Like, for instance, if I wanted to put a Crescent Moon in it, I definitely wouldn't put a Crescent Moon in a, a level 25 item. Um, I thought my character had a Crescent Moon on it, but he doesn't. <laughs> That's my other character. Um, so this one, probably not the greatest idea to hold on to. Um, there are some recipes that you can put in a, uh, a three-socket polearm class. So if you go back, if we go back to the website, we can take a look at uh, polearms. Runes and sockets, three sockets. Where is my pole arms? There it is. So as you can see, Crescent Moon is really one of the only three socket rune words specifically for pole arms. However, we also want to check weapons. So we've got Malice, which is Ith LF, which is level 15. You could put a Malice in there if you wanted to. Um, we have uh, Edge that only works in missile weapons, so that's not going to work. Uh, we've got Venom, which is Tal Maldol at level 49, so a little bit too high level, honestly, for a uh, level 25 uh, polearm. And then we've got Fury, of course, with his Jagol Eth, which is, again, way too high level for a level 25 polearm. You would definitely want to look for a better base than that. Alright, so we're going to drop that back on the ground, and we're going to keep on moving. So a bunch of blue items, no whites, so we're moving on. We're in the Cow King sounds out now. So there is a circlet. Let's take a look at the circlet. Two socket circlet, level 16. That would be good for a lore. Um, let me make sure to uh, pull that up on camera here so you guys can see. So this is a, uh, a two-socket circlet that just dropped from one of the cows. And um, and one of the things that you could use a two-socket circlet for is a lore helmet. Um, lore is a really easy recipe. You know what, let's go ahead and make that real quick. It's uh, 
This is, this is a decent little base for a low-level lore helmet. Um, so why not? We'll just go ahead and we'll make it. Um, so lore is... So I believe it's uh, Ort Soul, if I'm correct. So we're going to put uh, an Ort Rune. And then we're going to put a, uh, a Soul Rune. And we've got ourselves a little plus one to skills, Lightning Resist 30 Circlet. So a very easy way that we can make a little low-level circlet for a character. Now you notice that the the circlet only had a level requirement of 17, but when I made the rune word, it went up to 27. That's because lore is a level 27 rune word, and, uh, and you cannot use it until you hit level 27. Now what other items could you have made in that? Um, you could have also done uh, Neftir, which is uh, Nadir. Um, you could have also done... Um, there's a couple different helmet rune words. Um, some of them are low level, uh, and some of them are higher level. But basically, what we're looking at here is we're looking at bases and uh, and which ones to keep and which ones not to keep. So, so that would have made a really nice lore helmet if you needed the lore. And there are a lot of different qualifiers when you're looking at uh, is an item good or a rune word. You know, it does it have a decent amount of um, of strength requirement. If, uh, if the strength requirement is too high, you might as well just drop it back on the ground. Um, that's And that's part of the issue for a lot of these items, is that, like, say you found a 15% ED sacred armor with 232 strength requirement, and you're a sorceress, it's not going to be any good for you. Um, do you still want to hang on to it? Probably. If you found a 15% ED sacred armor, you might want to hang on to it, because there might be somebody out there who would like to use it, because um, that's a good find. But um, specifically, for you, it's a bad arm. Now, another way specifically that you can search for bases is, uh, is chests. And a lot of people will go into uh, Lower Karast and they will farm the chests and the weapon racks and the armor racks. And the reason why is because you can get a lot of uh, white items. Alright, so here we have a uh, shark tooth armor, which is a nightmare plate. So we can take a look at this nightmare plate and we'll see... What we, uh, what we end up with. So the Nightmare Plate is 242 armor. It has a defense requirement of 103 and a level requirement of 25. It might make a decent uh, low-level Rune Word armor, but um, you would have to add sockets to this armor, and that means rolling it for sockets. And uh, just as a demonstration, let's go ahead and we'll roll this for sockets. I'd like to uh, show you the, the the rolling of sockets recipe at least once successfully, not the uh, not the failed version that I showed you guys earlier. So uh, again, we're gonna do the uh, recipe, which is tal, thal, and then a a perfect topaz, and we take them and we put them in here uh, with the armor, and you hit transmute, and now we see I have a three socket uh, shark tooth armor. So what can I put in a three socket shark tooth armor? I've got I've got my three socket shark tooth armor, but uh, but what can I actually put in it to uh, to make it worthwhile? Well, let's take a look over at Diablo2.io again, um, and uh, we're gonna look up item group, armors, body armor. There we go, and then we're gonna look up sockets three. And so we've got quite a few options here, as you can see, but we're looking for something around the level requirement of this. So we've got Peace. Peace is level 29. That is uh, Shale, Thal, Am. And uh, Shale, Thal, Am is a pretty easy recipe. Uh, it's definitely one that I could see making, but it's uh, plus two to Amazon, which is specific to that particular class. So if you would like an Amazon body armor, it's a decent body armor for an Amazon. Uh, we also have Gloom, which is Foul on Paul, so that's not good. Um, and I'm looking at the level requirements here. We've got Myth. Myth is level 32, so that would be a decent uh, armor for that. We've got Hell and Nef. Myth is a plus 2 to Barbarian armor with negative uh, 15% requirements, which is nice because that negative 15% requirements is going to lower the strength requirement on the armor. And um, I think that's pretty much it for, for like lower tier rune words. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and make a piece. I could use one for later. So we're going to uh, put Shale Thal Am in there. Let's go ahead and pull this back on the camera here. So I want to put uh, Shale uh, Thal. 
Where's my where my tools? My tools, my tools. And then an Amron. And now we have a uh, piece shell thal am. So plus two Amazon that can come in handy for later when I build one of my Amazons, which I do plan to build several Amazons. Um, so let's go back in here. We'll take another look and, uh, and see if we can find anything else that might be useful for Rune Wars. So we've got a Tolwar. A Tolwar is only one socket. It's also a very slow sword, so not a good uh, Rune Word based sword usually. We got a Scale Mail with uh, only one socket, so no go. So here's a Rune Word base that I found earlier, and um, it's not exactly the 100 percent best rune word base but it's a very interesting one indeed it's a three socket royal shield and uh, as you can see it has 45 all resistances on it already and this 45 all resistances will add to whatever rune word i put in it now there are a couple different options that i could put into this shield uh, this is a level 41 shield and um, if we go over to uh diablo2.io uh, we can take a quick look and see what we could put in this shield. So first off, let's go ahead and grab our uh, Paladin Shields. And um, and then we're going to grab three sockets, which was already up. So we've got uh, Sanctuary could go in there, which is Coco Mal, level 49. It's pretty much the exact same level. Uh, as you can see, it's 20% faster recovery, uh, faster block, fast increased chance of blocking. It has uh, all res 50 to 70. It's actually it would be a really nice um, rune word to put in there because if it rolled 70, it would add to the 45. So you would be looking at 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 115. You would be looking at 115 to all resistances on a shield, which is absolutely amazing. And uh, and you can dedicate pretty much all the rest of your equipment at that point to um, to whatever you wanted. Um, you can also put Dream in there, which is I.O. Jaw Pull, which is a much more expensive recipe. But it's certainly not a bad one to put in a shield with plus 45 all res. Um, if you were going to put a Dream in a shield, you probably would want a Hell version of the shield, though. Um, just simply because the Hell versions have higher strength or higher defense and, uh, and usually a little bit higher blocking, too. Um, they also have higher smite damage, which uh, comes in handy if you want to be a smiter. Um, so, for instance, this particular shield might not be the best base for a dream, but it could be a decent base for a sanctuary or an ancient's pledge, which is Ral or Tal. Uh, Ral or Tal is 48% to all resistances, which would again stack on to the royal shield. Um, however, if you were going to go with uh, an all res shield at le in the level 40s, it looks like uh, sanctuary is definitely a lot better than ancient's pledge. You also have the Dragon Shield, which is Surlo Soul, which uh, is <laughs> a pretty expensive. Uh, Sur and Low Runes are pretty expensive runes. So an, an interesting shield, specifically for uh, a couple different recipes. The 45 to all res is what makes it perfect, and if you happen to find a Hell version, uh, which would be a Vortex Shield, which is three or four sockets, um, those are definitely very nice for rune words. Now, four socket rune words are different. Say, for instance, you were to find a four socket vortex shield. Uh, four socket vortex shields have exile, which is a very, very nice rune word. However, when you look for an exile rune word, you're looking for an ethereal. Uh, because you can see here it has the repairs one durability in four seconds mechanic this means that an ethereal shield will repair itself and uh, and you would definitely want that extra defense bonus from it being ethereal uh phoenix is uh four sockets i don't even know why that's up here why is it uh oh yeah that's right because i chose four sockets so <laughs> phoenix is uh is specifically a uh, a decent shield for some characters like uh, javazon and the uh, sorceress because of the negative fire resistance uh, things like that and then we also have spirit uh, which is four sockets spirit is very nice for caster classes and uh, and honestly uh, even non-caster classes will use it sometimes because of the uh, plus two to all skills along with the uh, the resistances the vitality the magic absorb um, things like that definitely make it uh, an interesting um, thing now a spirit can be in a sword and it can also be in a shield so it's two completely different uh, rune words in two completely different items as you can see on the uh, shield it has the resistances and on the sword it does not 
So, uh, so different effects when you're putting it in a sword versus when you're putting it in a shield. Um, and this is basically what it comes down to is looking for rune word bases. I've made quite a few really nice prime rune words. Uh, one in particular is in necromancer heads. So if you were running along and uh, and you happen to see a really nice necromancer head, um, you can put two sockets in it, or if it has two sockets in it, you can show, throw a shale and an eth in there and make yourself a, uh, a rhyme shield. Um, we're also looking at other rune words like uh, treachery, which is in a three socket armor. And um, specifically when it comes to rune words and what you're looking for, you're looking for what you need for your specific character or what somebody else needs for their specific character. Um, if we're going to go over the bases real quick, which I think we should, then let's go over the bases uh, together. So what we're going to go over is essentially what are you looking for to actually keep? Like if you're running through the cow level and something drops, what are you looking for to actually keep to hold on to? Well, there are a lot of different items that people will want you to uh, to keep to hold on to, and they're definitely good for trading as well, which is interesting. The first one, and I think one of the most important ones, is body armor. And let's talk about body armor real quick. So the first thing that you have to know about body armor is body armor has uh, weight ratings. So there are three different weight ratings. There are light, medium, and, uh, and heavy weight ratings. The light armors, any light armor that is classified as light, has no penalties. Uh, medium armors have a small run-walk penalty, and heavy armors have a rather large run-walk penalty, as well as they will consume your stamina faster. Um, and because of this, there are specific plates that are well sought after, um, and one of the plates that is most sought after is the Mage Plate. The Mage Plate is a decent um, balance of strength requirement, uh, defense, and also the fact that it is a light plate. Now you'll see that there are three different versions of the, uh, the, the plate. That is the Light Plate, which is the normal, which is very useful for a stealth armor. Uh, the Mage Plate, which people actually do look for for uh, Enigma. Uh, people look for a 15% ED 3 socket mage plate uh, to put an enigma in. And then also the Archon plate. The Archon plate is the Hell version. Um, now the Hell versions tend to have the best defense, but they also tend to have the highest requirements. So when you are looking at, uh, at the Hell versions, uh, people will, uh, will look at those strength numbers. So if we click on Elite here, uh, we will have the Sacred Armor, as you can see, has a 232 strength requirement, which really restricts it from uh, from use. Uh, the Shadow Plate here is a heavy armor, and most people will tend not to use it, and it also has a 230 strength requirement. So if you were going to go with a high strength requirement base, like if you were a high strength character, um, you would definitely want to go with the Sacred Armor over the Shadow Plate, because the Shadow Plate is basically the same strength requirement and has a higher move run-walk penalty. Um, the, uh, the lacquered plate, loricated mail, hellforge plate, these are all plates that people tend to avoid uh, because of the high strength requirement. Um, sorry, the loricated mail has 149, but it's also a heavy armor, so people will avoid it because it's a heavy armor. Um, the kraken shell is actually a medium with a strength requirement of 174, so it's not bad. Uh, the balrog skin is medium with only a strength requirement of 165, it's not bad. Um, and as you can see here, there's a defense number. You see this defense number here and how it varies rather wildly. So 399 to 505. If you found a bone weave, for instance, and it was 399, you just want to throw it in the garbage because 399 bone weave is a very low bone weave. Um, same thing with the Archon plates. If we take a look at the Archon plates, uh, which is right here, 410 is the lowest that you can possibly roll on an Archon plate and 524 is the highest. So when you're looking for an Archon plate, you're going to be looking for one that has a slightly higher defense. Now for mercenaries, you're going to be looking for an ethereal armor. So any armor of these armors, it's going to be ethereal and it's going to have a higher defense than what it is rated. It's, uh, it's a 50% bonus, so you get extra defense on top for it being ethereal. It also reduces the requirements by, as we talked about earlier, 10 points. Is nice. So an ethereal sacred armor would be 222 instead of 232, which isn't bad. Um, now when you're looking for armors, if you found like a three socket archon plate or a four socket archon plate, 
Um, there are a lot of different things you can put in here. Um, two socket Archon plates are also not bad. Uh, you can throw a smoke in there. Uh, smoke isn't bad for a, 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 a high level armor um, if you don't have anything else. Um, you know, until you until you get those uh, those really nice pieces. Uh, some people prefer things like dust shroud. If you look at the dust shroud, the dust shroud has 467 defense on the top end, but it has only a strength requirement of 77. So for a very low strength requirement character, dust shrouds are kind of nice. Uh, one of the main downsides to the dust shroud, in my opinion, though, is that it looks like crap. <laughs> You're basically naked. And, um, you know, each one of these armors has its own specific purposes. And as you can see, you've got your your light plates, um, your medium plates, and your heavy plates. And each one has a different strength requirement, a different uh, amount of defense. You know, the sacred armor can have a maximum defense of 600, uh, which means that if you wanted, you know, a really high defense plate and you found, like, an ethereal sacred armor, it's going to have one of the highest defenses um, out of all the armors in the game. Um, whereas something like the Archon plate can only roll 524, um, so you've got basically what is that a uh, a 76 point, uh, defense difference, which isn't which isn't ridiculously huge, and that's why you can see that a lot of people will choose the Archon plate over others. Another decent choice is the Great Hauberk, which has a strength requirement of 118 and is also a light plate. Uh, it's not too bad. The Archon plate wins out by a couple points on the defense, but. Um, but it, it's uh, it's it's decent. Um, another thing that you're going to be looking for is pole arms. Um, in general, pole arms are something that a lot of people uh, are looking for, and this is because of mercenaries. So when you're thinking about mercenaries, you are thinking of ethereal. So mercenaries are always going to want ethereal items over normal items because they do not lose durability. Um, there are very specific pole arms that people look for. Um, usually elite pole arms, but uh, also low-level uh, spirit bases, like just a, a Volge with four sockets. Um, if you're looking uh, for inside bases, uh, just any four socket pole arm uh, that is a, a pole arm class, not a spear class, a pole arm class. And uh, we're going to take a look at the elite versions, though. So if you were to find a uh, four socket ethereal colossus Volge, or a four socket colossus Volge, um, you can turn that into a inside base. Um, a four socket giant thresher, four socket great pole axe, four socket cryptic axe, uh, four socket uh, thresher, etc., etc. And it doesn't have to be four sockets. There are other recipes too. Like three socket uh, ethereal cryptic axe could be used for a very nice uh, pole arm, which is the crescent moon. Crescent moon actually makes a halfway decent uh, item. I'm going to show you one of those in just a second. I have one on my paladin. My Paladon. And uh, let me show you this one. So this is the weapon that my mercenary is using right now. It's a uh, Crescent Moon and a three-socket Ethereal Cryptic Axe. As you can see, it's 138 to 634. has lots of elemental damage on it, negative lightning resistance. Um, the reason why I put this on him and specifically is because I'm a Conviction Paladin and I'm reducing all the lightning resistance, which uh, boosts the damage of the Cryptic Axe quite exponentially. Uh, because it has all that lightning damage on it. And uh, I'm going to give him some other forms of lightning damage later as well. Uh, but that's just one such use for um, for those particular items. And we go back to, uh, to Diablo2.io. So um, Paladin Shields are also something you're going to be looking for a lot. And um, as you look for Paladin Shields, you're going to be looking for mainly um, three and four socket shields for the most part, although two socket shields aren't bad. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up the shields. Bing, 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 bing. Shields, here we go. Alright, so um, shields can roll with 45 to all res, as I showed you earlier, and, uh, and this makes them extremely valuable for that reason. Um, when you're pulling up shields, um, you're looking for the hell version of the shields, so uh, the elites the elite versions is the Sacred Tars, the Sacred Rondache, the Kuros, Zacharim, and Vortex shields. And, uh, and as you can see, the maximum number of sockets on the Vortex is four. The max sockets on the Zacharim is four. Um, so it's four on every single one of these. Um, the rune words that you can put in these are really nice. And, and, and if you can find one that has 45 all res with 
with uh, four sockets or is ethereal, like an ethereal four socket vortex shield. Those are very valuable because of the um, the exile rune word, which has the repairs durability modifier on it. Um, you can also use these for other things, like I showed you guys earlier. The uh, Coco Mal can give you 115 to all resistances if you want to run that. Um, there are definitely benefits to having a 115 all res shield, um, specifically, you know, not having to have resistances on anything else for the most part. Um, another item that you're going to be looking for a lot is um, a monarch shield. So uh, if you look down here, you'll see that the monarch shield is a strength requirement of 156. It is uh, basically the best shield with the lowest strength requirement at hell difficulty. Um, it has a decent uh, block chance. It has nice defense. Um, it has a good strength requirement, and it is capable of four sockets. Uh, you see the heater here has a much lower requirement, strength requirement, but is only capable of two sockets. Um, this is this is the difference between these. The Hyperion Shield is only capable of three. Uh, the Troll's Nest is only capable of three. Blade Barrier is only capable of three, etc., etc. So if you want that nice four socket shield for a spirit, Monarch becomes your choice, uh, just simply because it is capable of four sockets and has 156 strength requirement. The Ward has 185, and the pa the pa the Aegeus has uh, 219. So these are kind of off the table for most sorceresses. Now, um, white monarchs or four socket monarchs are actually really uh, nice for specific rune words. And even if you even if you roll it and you get a two socket or a three socket, there are other recipes that you can put in there. Um, like for instance, uh, the uh, the rhyme can go in a two socket, which is very nice. Uh, Splendor, which is plus one to all skills. You can also throw a, um, a Coco Mal in a three socket and get yourself some really nice uh, resistances. I actually rolled a, uh, a Coco Mal for my uh, Javazon just simply because she needed uh, some decent resistances, and uh, and I have her uh, right here. I said Javazon. She's not a Javazon. She's a Spirazon. She's a, it's one of the first Spirazons I've made in a very long time. And um, let me show you her shield real quick. Uh, this is a, a Coco Mal made in a white monarch. And uh, it rolled absolutely beautiful with uh, 70 to all res. So uh, just just an amazing defensive shield. Uh, not a lot of offensive going on there, but uh, you know, 20% faster hit recovery, faster block, increased chance of blocking, uh, all resistances 70, which is absolutely beautiful. And as I told you earlier, if you combine that on a uh, paladin shield, you will end up with 115 to all rounds if you can manage to roll uh, perfect. So uh, very very nice uh, rune word there for just just defensive purposes. Uh, much better than ancient pledge, by the way. Uh, but a little bit more costly with that mal rune in there. The Ko's are easy to come by, but the mal runes, the mal runes are not. And um, let's go back to Diablo2.io, and I'll show you a little bit more. So um, other uh, things that you're going to be looking for are uh, necromancer heads. So uh, specifically, necromancer heads can only get two sockets. If you look, all these say max sockets two, max sockets two, max sockets two. So you're limited on your rune words, but all the shield rune words do work inside of necromancer heads. You're looking for necromancer heads that have plus to skills on them, specifically the plus to skills that uh, are for those particular characters. So for instance, if I'm a, if I'm a bone spear necromancer, I'm looking for bone spear. If I'm a, a poison nova necromancer, I'm looking for poison nova. If I'm a summoning necromancer, I'm looking for skeletons and skeleton mastery and clay golem and things like that. So if you, for instance, uh, were to find an overseer skull with plus three skeleton mastery, plus three skeletons, and plus three clay golem, that would be an absolutely amazing Amazing shield uh, for a splendor, which is plus one to all skills, and uh, and definitely something that you should hold on to. Um, these are the very interesting things that you're going to look for for rune word bases. Um, another interesting rune word base that you want to look for is wands, and it does not matter what wand; it really does not. Um, wands, as long as it has two sockets, can make the very awesome rune word white. Uh, white is a very, very awesome rune word specifically for necromancers. And uh, if we go over here and we take a look at white, um, it is Dole Io. It's very easy to make. Uh, Dole and Io are not hard to come by runes. And, um, and you can see that it has plus three poison and bone spells, plus three bone armor, plus two bone spear, and plus four skeleton mastery. 
um, and this stacks with plus the skills on the wand itself. So if I find a wand, for instance, that is plus three bone spear, um, it has plus three poison and bone and plus two bone spear already, and then it's going to have plus five bone spear for a total of five, six, seven, eight to bone spear. It's going to be plus eight bone spear once that's done. Um, same thing with the skeleton mastery. If I were to find a plus three skeleton mastery wand, it would be four, five, six, seven to skeleton mastery, and so forth and so on. And uh, and it's a very very nice wand uh, to make early on for a uh, bone spear or a poison necromancer um, until you can get something better. Um, I believe it's actually best in slot for a uh, a bone spear necromancer, but um, for other necromancers there are other wands which are best in slot. However, if you find that perfect white base and you want to just go ahead and throw dual IO in it, it's certainly not going to hurt anything. Um, as long as the wand is capable of getting two sockets, as I said earlier, I had some that I found at really low levels which were not capable of getting two sockets. And uh, let's go back to the bases real quick, and we're going to take a look at some more items which you might want to look for for uh, bases. So uh, javelins cannot be socketed, so don't worry about those. And um, shields we've talked about, armors we've talked about. Um, helmets are an interesting topic because there's not really a huge number of, uh, of things in helmets that you can make, no rune words. Um, weapons, I think, is probably one of the bigger uh, categories, so let's talk about weapons real quick. So when you're talking about rune words and weapons, um, it's very, very specific to what rune words you're trying to make. Uh, because a lot of the rune words are only in specific weapons. Like for instance, if you're trying to make a spirit, spirit is only in swords. So you have to pick a sword base, like a crystal sword. Um, if you're going for a, a rune word that is in um, hammers or uh, scepters or things like that, you're going to have to choose the specific rune words for those specific items. And you're going to need bases that um, that are going to work with those items. Um, so if we go over to the rune words real quick and we take a look at the rune words, uh, we'll see that like each particular one will say, it says like pole arms and staves, um, missile weapons, uh, you've got uh, staves, you've got um, just weapons in general. Swords, hammers, and scepters only. Um, you know, we, we're, we've got tons of different stuff here, but which recipes are the ones that people are, are looking for a lot? Well, Breath of the Dying is one that a lot of people like to make, and Breath of the Dying is used in all weapons, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but what weapons in particular are you looking for for Breath of the Dying? Well, uh, a lot of the times people are looking for uh, Thunderballs, Ethereal Thunderballs, and because Breath of the Dying has a Zod root in it, you always want Ethereal. So Ethereal Thunderballs, Ethereal Berserker's Axes, and Ethereal um, War Pikes tend to be the, uh, the the choices for that particular recipe. Um, also, you know, there is Grief. Grief is a uh, very nice rune word, and a lot of people love to make a Grief. Um, grief is in Axes and Swords, and so a lot of the times you will see people put that in a Berserker's Axe because Berserker's Axe has the good range. Um, the reason why Berserker's Axe is chosen over the others is because of that range. So if we go over to the uh, bases and we take a look at the axes specifically, um, and you look up the, um, the axes, so let's take a look at axes in particular, and uh, there we go. And we're also going to sort this by one-handed. Um, you'll see that there is a range modifier on the weapons, and it is right here. See, adds range 2, 1, 1. Uh, some of these are as low as uh, as 0, if I remember correctly. Like the hatchet adds range 0. <laughs> um, so like hatchet has basically no range, whereas the Berserker's Axe has the largest range out of all the melee weapons. Uh, the Naga is the Nightmare version, so it has the same range, and the War Axe is the normal version with the same range. Um, so the reason why Berserker's Axe tends to be picked over the others is specifically because of that, that, that higher range, which allows you to hit targets that are further away. Um, so an Ethereal Berserker's Axe is something that you definitely would hold on to. If you find an Ethereal Berserker's Axe, definitely 100% grab that and uh, put it in your inventory because it can be very useful for trade. 
Now, the reason why an ethereal berserker's axe is good is because, see, the max number of sockets is six, and as we talked about earlier, you can take that and you can automatically get six sockets um, at Larzic. So if I find an ethereal berserker's axe, I'm going to take that at Larzic, I'm going to get six sockets, and then I'm going to put the recipe in there for Breath of the Dying. Or um, if I want a grief, grief is a different recipe, and... Um, that would be a little bit different. So uh, I wouldn't want an ethereal for grief because grief is not going to make my item indestructible. And um, it definitely becomes an issue when you're dealing with specific recipes. Do you want an ethereal? Do you not want an ethereal? How many sockets do you want? What's the max number of sockets? And all these things come into play when you are trying to choose um, you know, what items to use for your specific recipes. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously, like, for instance, with the Small Crescent, I can't put, I can't put uh, Breath of the Dying in Small Crescent. It only has a maximum number of sockets of four. Um, I can't put a Breath of the Dying in a uh, Tomahawk. It only has a maximum sockets of two. Uh, so, you know, these, these are the things that you have to, uh, to figure out as you're figuring out which rune word you want. My advice to you guys and gals out there would be to pick your rune word first that you're interested in making. And once you've picked your rune word, try and figure out what would be the best base for that particular rune word um, for the situation that you're using it in. Like for instance, let's say you had an enigma. Um, enigma is a very nice rune word and it has a level requirement of 65. Um, it, uh, it, it doesn't have any negative requirements on it. And, uh, and it's going to be a little bit difficult to wield if you put it in the wrong item. So if I'm a sorceress, for instance, and I have very low strength, I might want to put it in a Dusk Shroud because it's 77 strength requirement and I, I don't want to build my strength any higher than 76. But um, here's the thing, though. Maybe you want to run a Monarch Shield, a Spirit Monarch Shield, which is 156 strength. And at that point, you might put it in an Archon Plate instead. And these are the things that, uh, that we look at um, as we're choosing our rune words and our rune word bases. Anyway, I hope that I have been a little bit helpful to you guys and gals out there who are uh, are looking to make rune words. And uh, if you have any questions, as always, I am more than happy to uh, to answer them. You can uh, you can ask me here on YouTube. You can go to my Twitch channel and you can ask me while I'm live. I'll be more than happy to answer you there. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's really up to you, but. Um, Thanks for watching.